Hi, my name is Ron Lohman. I'm here with my colleague Dana, and today we're going to talk about one of the more exciting parts of uh, AI SOCs, and it's really the type of security that's being implemented. So, Dana, what kind of trends are you seeing with respect to security implementations on AI chips? Well, what I see is that security is becoming more and more critical. AI um, is being applied across so many applications, um, and so models need to be protected because um, they take a long time to be produced, investment from the companies to produce, so they need to be protected during use and updates. Um, training data, user data needs to be protected from the privacy perspective, but also there are laws and regulations that, that come up. Um, as well as the neural network engine itself, uh, the inputs and outputs of the engines and the results need to be protected. So is there a big difference between um, protecting uh, the training function versus inference with respect to security or implementations similar? Well, um, so if I look at the, the threat profile for artificial intelligence applications, uh, there are many attack, attack profiles, right? So you can attack uh, at the training stage, you can attack the uh, or, or manipulate the, the data sets, the training data, um, and that can influence in a negative way the, the model. Uh, you can also uh, steal the, the data. Um, at also, when we move to the inference uh, stage, um, attacks or threats can be uh, around the inputs and the outputs of, of the engine, right? And then the engine can take the wrong decisions. And uh, uh, the um, um, neural network engine can be manipulated uh, and can misbehave. Are there different regulations on the, the training aspect versus inference or with respect to AI? across the board, or, or is it just related to the use case and the threat profiles? In addition to that, uh, biometrics, you can have uh, medical uh, records, you can have video information from within your house. So a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, personal information that, that is, is critical and it needs to be protected. As I mentioned earlier, if they don't follow up with the laws and, laws and regulations, then they have to pay a steep fines. Um, what types of security solutions are out there? to handle all these? Yeah, so if we think about the, the training data, protecting it from uh, um, um, misuse uh, or, or um, for tampering, um, solutions like uh, um, signature as well as uh, authentication, uh, before data is used, uh, preventing data uh, being uh, stolen. Uh, we've talked about private information important for the users. Uh, that can be addressed uh, via encryption. When we move to the inference uh, uh, stage, um, protecting the um, changing the model or manipulation of models, uh, that can be also addressed by um, authentication and encryption. And this um, is public-private key exchanges, correct? And another example is uh, the neural network engine itself. So security solutions for those kind of engines um, um, approach and include secure boot, secure debug, um, as well as uh, uh, secure communication of that engine. But in addition to that, there are other security fundamentals. So key management is a crucial component for a security solution, whether it's AI or other system, because keys in security protocols are very sensitive information. And if you compromise a key, you basically compromise the entire security. So key management is important uh, to be done in a, uh, um, a hardware or secure enclave. Uh, and distributed securely as well. Um, secure updates are also critical. Uh, we live in a world where the threat landscape continues to expand, we're, you know, uh, and so the solutions need to be agile to adapt to future threats. Um, so, so it's it's important to have the appropriate mechanisms uh, in a solution to be able to update uh, uh, software or fix bugs remotely after the systems have been deployed in the field. So when you talk about agile, you're meaning uh, new threat pro profiles, new viruses that are out there, new ways to attack uh, systems, correct? Exactly, and and there are some ways uh, to mitigate uh, in the, the SOC itself where you don't need to respin the SOC, you just update uh, securely the software that runs on that uh, SOC. The threat profile that we've talked about uh, earlier, um, the solutions really need to be tuned uh, specifically and, and that may mean uh, you have a more hardware real estate uh, or more or less software or vice versa. So it's a combination of hardware, software and security level that needs to be considered and it has to be tuned for uh, a targeted application. So starting with hardware, a hardware root of trust where you derive your keys and your um, important functions within 
we talked about secure boot is is uh, more more secure for sure. So the threat pro profiles that you have helped customers with aren't just through the silicon design, but even after it and the software they implement on those designs. Uh, exactly, uh, we want to make sure that we put the right foundation in the silicon to allow our customers and our customers' customers to upgrade software to uh, you know, deploy services and control the devices throughout their life cycle in a secure manner. Okay, and so how is Synopsys really addressing this with uh, Synopsys solutions? Uh, from um, um, hardware like secure enclaves um, hard with hardware root of trust, we have our tier root product family. Uh, these types of uh, uh, products can um, uh, support out of the box functions like secure root, secure update, um, key management, which I mentioned earlier how, how critical they are. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have security protocol accelerators uh, that can be used used uh, to encrypt and authenticate uh, models as they are being updated, uh, for example, as well as can be used for secure communication. Uh, another important aspect which I forgot to mention earlier, um, in AI uh, we're dealing with large data sets and yes. they are important in value, right? And so the memories need to be protected as well that deal with that data. So okay. inline memory encryption is another technology that is critical and we also have uh, high performance, low latency solutions that can protect um, uh, data in memories as well. So we have a lot of solutions, uh, they can be tuned for applications, and they work very well hand in hand. So addressing lots of different customers, we've seen lots of different threat profiles, lots of different security implementations. Um, is there anything else you want to add from Synopsys' perspective of, of solutions we provide? Well, um, our approach is to stay on top with the latest standards, regulations, and be able to provide the appropriate solutions for customers that can be differentiated in the market. And we will continue to be driven by, by this uh, goal. Well, I want to thank you for sharing your expertise today. You're um, it's obviously a very exciting time with implementing security and AI chips specifically. And if you want to hear more, please visit synopsis.com.